Okay, adjusting volume. I might be slurping a little bit in this video because for some reason, I just had a cookie and my salivary glands seem to think it's time to spew out Niagara Falls level of stuff into my mouth. <sighs> so since this week is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 13 mission, and today is the 50th anniversary of the safe return of these three men and it's also the 25th anniversary of the ron howard film about the mission i think you could probably figure out by that explanation why this is what i'm reviewing yeah <laughs> i probably could have practiced that a little bit so for those of you who don't know apollo 13 was a space mission in 1970 from nasa that went horribly wrong and is very famous for having the crew get losing oxygen because they were doing a cryo stir to tweak the oxygen tanks. But something went wrong and the tanks blew up, causing a huge explosion, and the crew had to shut down the majority of their machinery and try to get back home as quick as they could while facing several other... Uh, obstacles and setbacks along the way, and um, I I'm going to try my best to stick to reviewing this movie, but there might be uh, uh, multiple instances where I have to point out the facts versus the semi-fiction, I guess you could say, because th most of, most of the stuff in this movie is very accurate to what happened in real life. But there are a few differences that are made for dramatic purposes that, unlike most historical films, adds to the drama and doesn't make the audience feel stupid without them being aware of it. So, I've already gotten out of the plot, and this was kind of... The one thing I would like to say is that the movie stars Tom Hanks as Jim Lovell, the flight commander. You have Kevin Bacon as Jack Swigert, who plays the command module pilot. And you have Fred Hay or, I mean, Bill Paxton playing Fred Hayes, who's the uh, who's the pilot of the lunar module, or the LEM, which was the part of the spaceship that they would use to land on the moon. So, I think one thing that's kind of interesting about this movie is that it does kind of touch on the fact, it, I mean, it begins with a prologue about the first Apollo mission and how that went horribly wrong right on the launch pad. And then it fast forwards to Apollo 11, where we finally land on the moon on July 20th, 1969. And that's kind of what sets up the main um, story of the movie is that Jim Lovell wants to go to the moon and wants to actually claim what very few people could ever claim at that point, which is being on the moon and actually being able to touch it. And... It is kind of interesting, and Tom, Tom Hanks is actually a, a great choice for the role. I mean, the real Jim Lovell kind of thought Kevin Cosner was more similar to him in appearance. But by this point in the 90s, um, I mean, everyone knows Tom Hanks now is a, is a great actor, but it, the 90s is really when he really started to become very good. In the 80s, he had a lot of hits with comedy films, but then you had... Um, a League of Their Own, which, again, he wasn't he wasn't the main character. That was more of a comedy, but he did do some good dramatic acting in it. I, I don't think people realize that Tom Hanks could do serious acting until Philadelphia, and then uh, Forrest Gump at the same time. And so Apollo 13 came after uh, Tom Hanks had won the Oscar for Best Actor two years in a row. And this was another great performance from Tom Hanks. I really don't think he's ever given a bad performance. I think even in awful movies, you can at least say he's good. You know? And what I would also say about the other... I mean, Kevin Bacon and Bill Paxton, that every actor does a wonderful job. The only real major difference with the characters versus their real-life counterparts is that a lot of the scenes where people snap or yell or get up in everyone else's face, 
there weren't really any fights that happened. Because, for example, there's one scene where Fred Hayes starts uh, blaming Swigert for the fact that the tanks blew up because he was because uh, Swigert was the one who flipped the switch and that led to the explosion. That fight never happened. And there's also a scene later in the movie where they're trying to figure out re-entry procedures and Gene Kranz snaps at one of his uh, crew members at Mission Control just to give him the procedures. And everybody was calm and composed. That, that, that's like the one major, one of the major changes in the story is that they made people more emotional and less stoic. And I understand why they did that because they're trying to heighten the drama and emphasize the severity and desperation going on in the situation and the psychological issues going on. That was a good touch. Um, I think one thing that is also really noteworthy about the film, the visual effects. I mean, this movie came out 25 years ago. There might be one or two visual effects shots where you try to see the cameras looking at the crew members inside the ship, outside in space, looking through the window. Those do look, those look pretty bad. But most of the stuff, when it's just focusing on the ship and the ship alone with the debris floating around it, it looks really good. It looks a lot better than some of the effects in some of the more mainstream movies that have come out now. And I think it kind of goes to show you that back then they really had to work extra hard just for the CGI effects to look even remotely believable. And that does show the hard work. And another thing that I really do like about the movie is that it seems to me that when they do explain a lot of the technical jargon or the situations, they find a way to explain it in a way that's not condescending, but basic enough for the average audience member to understand the terminology and the task that Mission Control has to go with. You know? Because, I mean, obviously, we're not all astronauts, and what this movie does really well is that it tells us the story, tweaks the emotional feelings throughout the film and it also makes it understandable and coherent enough for us to grasp what's going on um honestly i i think the only real complaint i would have about the movie i i, I don't really think there are anything there is anything you can complain about the film one thing that I do think is also noteworthy is that during the scenes where you see the actors floating, they actually were floating because they went on one of those uh, training airplanes that NASA uses to get astronauts used to the sense of weightlessness. And they constructed a set inside that plane and they used it to shoot the scenes that were supposed to take place in space for the film. So that, that the actors are actually floating. They're not on some sort of harness trickery or anything like that. So th there, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of research that went into this film. And you can tell that Ron Howard, he wanted to do the story justice, but he also wanted to stay as close as he could to what actually happened to honor the story and respect the fact that the, the beauty of the story is that what would what, what would have been a simple mission to the moon became an extraordinary fight for survival and even though the mission was called a successful failure and that they managed to get back home safely but not quite reach the moon and probably one of the more heartbreaking scenes is where tom hanks is floating by the moon in the land with his crewmates and he just kind of envisions what it would have been like for him to be down there so you do kind of see the gut-wrenching pain that the character is going through. And I'm not really sure what else I can say about this movie without sounding like some sort of crazy fanboy. But I, I think this is definitely a movie that should be watched, especially now with the 50th anniversary and all. And I just think that if, if you're looking for a great movie to watch during quarantine with the idea of, a giant situation that's affecting the world and people trying to find their way to solve this. It's kind of a good inspirational movie to watch, actually. And it is kind of interesting to note that 
at the end of the movie, Tom Hanks has a voiceover saying, in character, he wonders when we'll be going back to the moon and when will that be. That would be really cool to see if we can go back to the moon, but until we do, I guess we'll just have to make the best of what we got with the space program. Um, so really, that's all I have to say about the movie. There isn't really much for me to say because um, I think I th th there's like few major talking points you can talk about with this film, and I think I covered all of them. So that's my review. Um, Monday, I will be doing Purple Haze, and I pray to God that I can take care of the intro for that song, but we'll see what happens. So I... I'm pr I might review Osmosis Jones next week, but until then, I'll see you guys in my cover on Monday. See ya!